got some eyebrow action going on with his uh, headlamp. So I caught my wife, I walked to it and said, what's up? <laughs> Building the window casements for the master bath provided a great break for our family from all of the sheetrock mud. There were still a few rooms that needed to get to level three. So Ryder took on the back downstairs bedroom, getting the third layer, the third coat. And Brian took on the front bedroom. And then he started to texture uh, the laundry room and the mud room for Piper and I to come in and apply the first coat of paint. We decided to do a knockdown texture that will have an imperfect smooth finish. This house is on the rustic side with imperfections and blemishes included. And so we felt this would be the best style or type of texture for the walls. We were just driving down the road and we thought, you know, you guys, you can tell them we've been working, we're covered with it. Uh, just in from sheetrock, doing trim in the master bathroom, and um, we chose we elected to use a knockdown texture on the sheetrock, and then we made some of our own trim. The sheetrock is probably one of the uglier, harder things yes. to do with a DIY family. Um, I do not, honestly, I do not enjoy sheetrock or mudding at all. <laughs> it has not been one of my favorite tasks. I prefer to, well, through this project, we realized there's certain projects that we enjoy more. And I realized I really enjoy staining wood. I love taking raw material, sanding it down, staining it and it's like instant gratification Same I guess. Results, yeah, the but, transformation um, take place and it's pretty radical. Heating sheetrock and taping and mudding seams and then sanding and coming back and doing it again and again. There's nothing glamorous about it. It is hard, hard work. And when you think you're done, you're not done. You have another layer to do or another round to go. So yeah. and the one good thing we can both say I think about sheetrock is that even though it's awful, it's hard work, um, the good thing that's come with it is I think I've watched my kids pick up a couple of pounds of muscle each, uh, just learning how to move that stuff and all the sanding and moving mud and, and what have you. And so, yeah. For Beyond that is instilling skills for life. They have skills that in between jobs or if something happens, they have a way to have a side hustle or um, do a side job or help a friend out or maintain their maintain their own homes. Yeah, there's money to be made in sheer rock and drywall repair and paint and texture and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, when things are down and out, there's always somebody who needs a home fixed up and 
grandma or right. whatever. And so what are some tips and tricks you can give people for paint? For paint? Got some mom who's trying to make it happen. Uh, don't get it everywhere. <laughs> Doesn't do it professionally. I am not a professional. Um, each time I do a DIY project or some sort of project um, with Brian, there's always there's always something to learn because he, he's like an onion. Like the movie Shrek, you know, peeling back the layers of, of, of an onion. Each time I do a project with him, it's like, okay, what layer of the onion are we gonna peel back, and what are we, what are we gonna accomplish or learn today? So, um, you know, and one of the tricks on that too is a lot of the dads. It's hard to be patient with your wife and kids when you're feeling the pressure of time and trying to get things done. And uh, one of the things I would say is that you know you need to open up the tolerances a little bit, and um, you know. It's easy enough for us as dads to come back and work whatever it is you're doing into perfection. And if the family makes a little mess here and there, you know, that's part of it. Part of it's enjoying the journey and not turning it into such a stressful occasion that nobody wants to come home to you. And laughter's a good thing. Learning how to laugh at your mistakes is part of it. And uh, just letting things go and know that tomorrow's a new day. Good morning guys, it is Saturday morning. It has been a long week. We are tired. Um, today's tasks, if you can tell behind me, this is the downstairs front bedroom. It is ready for paint. And uh, Brian's there getting us ready with our buckets and our rollers. And uh, he's going to cut in for us. I don't know if you can see me. He's gonna cut in for us around the lid so that we do not get any paint on the stained poplar planking. That would be sad if we did that. So he'll cut in around it, probably the first foot, all around the top edges of the lid. And then Piper and I will come behind and roll in the walls with our rollers. And I believe he will be um, finishing the other downstairs bedroom today, uh, final sanding and and then texturing and hopefully by this afternoon the texture and that will be dry enough so that Piper and I could get our drop cloths and our rollers over to that bedroom and start painting in on that bedroom. So we are in the thick of paint and come along and we'll see what we get done today. So he'll go in like I said around around the lid and cut in like the first foot for us and then Piper and I will come back and get our rollers and we're getting set up here and we'll roll it in. So hopefully by lunch, for sure, this room will be rolled with three coats at least of white. So we're about to get started here. So here we go. Saturday morning, it's been a full week. What do you have to say? Hoorah. <laughs> That's all you have to say because you're tired. I'm tired. <laughs> install a vanity one of the challenges is first of all plumb level and square is the builders motto plumb level and square so what is square isn't always plumb what is plumb is not always level and um, if you build a lot you'll figure that out um, so here's what we've done is we've got all the pipes and drains down here ready to go down there on the concrete, we had a little bit of a hump. We had to grind that out. The sheetrock, 
on both sides at the bottom was just a little tight for the cabinet and then the countertop I don't know why they built them this way but this one was an inch oversized um, so about that 72 inch piece vanity that's not really 72 inches it's more like 73 inches yes we're going to have to modify it we bought it at like a, a wholesale liquidator um, previous seasons maybe imperfect pieces the old adage of measuring twice cutting once uh, the guy on the floor said it was 72 inches um, the tag said it was 72 inches we did not physically measure it until we got home and we cannot take it back so we will modify it's not the end of the world uh, Brian is actually pretty good about modifying things and figuring out how to get it done so we have to do things kind of out of order um, with the vanity we we need to not get so much further along that we're in texture and paint and real finishes um, because once that vanity's in it's in he has to grind through the sheetrock grind a little just a little bit of the studs on the edges to make it fit and then come back and create special pieces to fit it in and to polish it up and make it look nice so note to self all you guys out there and for us going to these wholesale liquidator places um, just make sure you do your work especially with measured pieces uh, take your measuring tape with you and um, you know there's always a way to modify things I guess right and uh, anyway it wasn't um, what we had hoped it was. So we had to trim out the sheetrock and now we're gonna come back, patch it in over the top of it. It's not ideal, but it's a lot easier than moving walls. And when it's all finished, um, it'll look sharp. <laughs> Let me do the heaving and hauling.